All right, good morning, everyone. It's kind of small today. I know there's a lot of things going on and whatnot. A um, couple of explanations. We have the bathroom it, upstairs. It is functional. It's not done, but it's functional. So right now, we, we're working on getting a new door handle so that it'll lock. It does not lock. So if the door is open, it is available. If the door is shut, someone's in there. So as you come out, leave the door open so the next person knows, hey, it's available. Um, and in saying that, um, Chris, and then downstairs, the women's bathroom is going to be a shower room. So it is no more, the floor's torn out, there is no toilet, there is no sink. Don't go in there. The men's bathroom is now men's and women's. So use that. Boys and girls. Boys and girls. Same thing here, boys and girls. Um, and so Chris Funk is who has been helping us out here, but if you guys get a chance, Steve Wright uh, graciously gave up three days this week to help, and I know he had a lot going on and, and in fact was having air conditioner issues and came here instead of working at his house. So if any, if y'all get a chance, please thank him. Um, it was a crazy kind of week, so. Um, so then, of course, we've got VBS coming up starting tomorrow. Yay! So we're getting ready for that. It's not next week. Shut up, Jacob. I'm going to work too. Um, that's how I feel about it. So we need help. Even if you can only help one night or whatever, I, I kind of want a bathroom monitor for this just because it doesn't lock and stuff. So anyway, we'll get there. So if you want to help, if you can help with snacks, crafts are always just having people on standby just to help kids do their craft. You know, the littler ones might need a little more help than the others. So, um, we've got a new calendar for August. So, Anthony, do you mind handing that out for me? Sorry, you sit in the front row. I pick you all the time. Um, so, you can kind of look and we'll start. Wednesday is our new after this week, after VBS, the following Wednesday, August 9th, instead of having kids group on Wednesday, we're gonna do a church service on Wednesday. The kids will stay upstairs during worship, and then after worship, kids will go downstairs and we'll do kid things. Adults can stay upstairs. That being said, we have sign-up sheets in the back um, for, thank you, honey, um, for lessons. So if you want to, there's an opportunity to teach a lesson, bring a snack, do the game. Maybe you can do all three for one night. Maybe you can bring a snack, and that's all, and that would be great. And it doesn't have to be some elaborate snack. I mean, a bag of Oreos or Chips Ahoy or whatever would be great too, you know. Um, so don't feel like you have to make homemade. But we posted it last week. No one has signed up to teach any lessons, so we need to be praying about that. Um, I need, I'm going to teach a lesson. I need to sign up, and I will do that today. Looking ahead on our calendar, there's no men's group for August, taking a break. We took a break for ladies' group in July. We'll start back in August, so August 26th for that. Um, just a little bit about the food pantry. Um, the food unload is the 10th, and then food pantry day is the 12th, and the time got erased from there, but it's the 1 to 4. Um, the food pantry, I'm so full of good tidings and cheer. Um, we've not had enough help the last couple of times. And so we really need help. If we're not able to get enough help, and I know people have things going on and health issues, I, I get it. And I'm not pointing fingers or anything like that. However, if we don't, if the help doesn't step up, then we're going to have to look at perhaps revamping the food pantry. We've always had the food pantry, when we started it, it was to serve the township of Irving. We have a lot of people that come from WIT. We've kind of turned a blind eye to that. We've had enough food and we've had enough help in the beginning and we went ahead and served them. Um, if we can't get the help, last month it really took a toll on Randy and because um, he was the only one that could go up and down the stairs, so he was the only one that was hoofing it up and down. And then it got crazy, and we didn't realize somebody carried a whole cart outside, 
and unloaded it and then carried it back down. So we just, <laughs> just a little chaotic. So be praying about that. I know, again, there's some people you may not be able to help, but you can pray about it. And God has, God knows what he wants and maybe that's what God wants us to do. So we need to pray about it and see what God, if we lack wisdom, James says, we pray about it and he'll give it. So we need to pray about that. Since a lot of Perhaps. And we've had a couple of calls. Um, we've had lots of calls. Lots of calls. After we had the food pantry this month, people wanting to come for food. And so again, we're the only, Randy and I are the only ones to do that. Um, so what I think what we're gonna do this month is when we're done with food pantry, we're gonna make some food boxes and then we're gonna do some bags in the freezer so when somebody calls, it's, it's not that they get to shop. And I don't, I don't wanna sound mean and harsh, but um, it, it just with our schedules and, and all of that, then when they call, we'll say, yes, here's your box, here's your bag. So that it's not a, an hour where someone, you know. So could we find time to pre-make boxes for that scenario? We will, that's what I figured what we will do, like food pantry day when we're done, and we've done. Like excess and makeup boxes and bags. Right, okay. yeah. Can, can, that, can we reach out to the to CRC guys? I'm sure we could. Because they, they help several. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, any volunteers at all. Yeah. Chair, and then uh, if there are boxes and bags already made, won't have to bother Randy. Right, and you're not bothering us. I don't want you to. I don't want to make you feel like that, you know. But yeah, they shouldn't be calling you. <laughs> yeah, they should. They shouldn't be bothering you. So yeah, no. If the boxes and bags are made up, then boom, here you go. Yeah, and it, I feel like that just kind of makes it easier, and it, it takes the guesswork <clears throat> out of it, you know. So, um, I think that's it. I know. I just keep going on and on be Acts chapter 7. So if you want to have your Bibles out and you want to read along, this is, when I play these videos, I don't know if I've said it, but this is word for word from the Bible, the NIV. Uh, so catch us up where we're at. We just had uh, the choosing of the seven. And uh, they chose ones that were full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit, ones who were ready to serve. And uh, they were called deacons. And what a deacon does is serve. And so Stephen was kind of the chief of all of them. And so we're going to uh, begin. He's going to, it's going to say, a few things about Stephen, and then Stephen is going to give a history lesson. He's standing before the people who are going to judge him, and, and he lays out the Old Testament, and he shows where the Holy Spirit was there, and they just refused to listen. God kept speaking to them and kept speaking to them, speaking to them at different times and each time they go no I don't want to do that no I'm going to do it my own way and so much to the don't want to spoiler so much to the end uh, of the chapter the people in charge are plugging their ears because they don't want to hear the truth they don't, they don't care what you think it doesn't matter what you think it matters what they think, and if you don't agree with them, they will kill you. Sounds like a loving group of people. Yeah. It's just who I want to worship with on a Sunday morning. Those who would kill me if I disagree with it. And so, where it is for day, today, yesterday, today, and forever. And I can tell you right now, we're on... The precipice of that in this church. We will either listen to him or we'll get ticked off at each other 
and everything will fall apart. So let's all have ears to listen. Now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, did great wonders and miraculous signs among the people. Opposition arose, however, from members of the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called. Jews of Cyrene and Alexandria, as well as the provinces of Cilicia and Asia, these men began to argue with Stephen, but they could not stand up against his wisdom or the spirit by whom he spoke. Then they secretly persuaded some men to say, we have heard Stephen speak words of blasphemy against Moses and against God. So they stirred up the people and the elders and the teachers of the law. They seized Stephen and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They produced false witnesses who testified, This fellow never stopped speaking against this holy place and against the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs Moses handed down to us. All who were sitting in the Sanhedrin looked intently at Stephen, and they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. Then the high priest asked him, Are these charges true? To this he replied, Brothers and fathers, listen to me. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham while he was still in Mesopotamia, before he lived in Haran. Leave your country and your people, God said, and go to the land I will show you. So he left the land of the Chaldeans and settled in Haran. After the death of his father, God sent him to this land where you are now living. He gave him no inheritance here, not even a foot of ground. But God promised him that he and his descendants after him would possess the land, even though at that time Abraham had no child. God spoke to him in this way. Your descendants will be strangers in a country not their own, and they will be enslaved and mistreated 400 years. But I will punish the nation they serve as slaves, God said. And afterward, they will come out of that country and worship me in this place. Then he gave Abraham the covenant of circumcision. And Abraham became the father of Isaac and circumcised him eight days after his birth. Later, Isaac became the father of Jacob. And Jacob became the father of the 12 patriarchs. Because the patriarchs were jealous of Joseph, they sold him as a slave into Egypt. But God was with him and rescued him from all his troubles. He gave Joseph wisdom and enabled him to gain the goodwill of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So he made him ruler over Egypt and all his palace. Then a famine struck all Egypt and Canaan, bringing great suffering. And our fathers could not find food. When Jacob heard that there was grain in Egypt. He sent our fathers on their first visit. On their second visit, Joseph told his brothers who he was, and Pharaoh learned about Joseph's family. After this, Joseph sent for his father Jacob and his whole family, 75 in all. Then Jacob went down to Egypt, where he and our fathers died. Their bodies were brought back to Shechem and placed in a tomb that Abraham had bought from the sons of Hamor at Shechem for a certain sum of money. As the time drew near for God to fulfill his promise to Abraham, the number of our people in Egypt greatly increased. Then another king, who knew nothing about Joseph, became ruler of Egypt. He dealt treacherously with our people and oppressed our forefathers by forcing them to throw out their newborn babies so that they would die. At that time, Moses was born, and he was no ordinary child. 
For three months, he was cared for in his father's house. When he was placed outside, Pharaoh's daughter took him and brought him up as her own son. Moses was educated in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was powerful in speech and action. When Moses was 40 years old, he decided to visit his fellow Israelites. He saw one of them being mistreated by an Egyptian. So he went to his defense and avenged him by killing the Egyptian. Moses thought that his own people would realize that God was using him to rescue them. But they did not. The next day, Moses came upon two Israelites who were fighting. He tried to reconcile them by saying, Men, you are brothers. Why do you want to hurt each other? But the man who was mistreating the other pushed Moses aside and said, Who made you ruler and judge over us? Do you want to kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? When Moses heard this, he fled to Midian, where he settled as a foreigner and had two sons. After 40 years had passed, an angel appeared to Moses in the flames of a burning bush in the desert near Mount Sinai. When he saw this, he was amazed at the sight. As he went over to look more closely, he heard the Lord's voice. I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses trembled with fear and did not dare to look. Then the Lord said to him, Take off your sandals. The place where you are standing is holy ground. I have indeed seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their groaning and have come down to set them free. Now come, I will send you back to Egypt. This is the same Moses whom they had rejected with the words, who made you ruler and judge? He was sent to be their ruler and deliverer by God himself through the angel who appeared to him in the bush. He led them out of Egypt and did wonders and miraculous signs in Egypt at the Red Sea and for 40 years in the desert. This is that Moses who told the Israelites, God will send you a prophet like me from your own people. He was in the assembly in the desert with the angel who spoke to him on Mount Sinai and with our fathers. And he received living words to pass on to us. But our fathers refused to obey him. Instead, they rejected him and in their hearts turned back to Egypt. They told Aaron, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who led us out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. That was the time they made an idol in the form of a calf. They brought sacrifices to it and held a celebration in honor of what their hands had made. But God turned away and gave them over to the worship of the heavenly bodies. This agrees with what is written in the book of the prophets. Did you bring me sacrifices and offerings 40 years in the desert, O house of Israel? You have lifted up the shrine of Molech and the star of your god, Rephan, the idols you made to worship. Therefore, I will send you into exile beyond Babylon. Our forefathers had the tabernacle of the testimony with them in the desert. It had been made as God directed Moses according to the pattern he had seen. Having received the tabernacle, our fathers under Joshua brought it with them when they took the land from the nations God drove out before them. It remained in the land until the time of David, who enjoyed God's favor and asked that he might provide a dwelling place for the God of Jacob. But it was Solomon who built a house for him. However, the Most High does not live in houses made by men. As the prophet says, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or where will my resting place be? Has not my hand made all these things? <laughs> you
you stiff-necked people with uncircumcised hearts and ears. You're just like your fathers. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet? Your fathers did not persecute. They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. You, who have received the law that was put into effect through angels, but have not obeyed it. When they heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. As they covered their ears, yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed him. Dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees. He cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And he had said this. And Saul was there, giving approval to his death. Isn't that a happy little part of scripture? Usually what I do is, as I'm reading, I'm or watching like there, I'm listening for what the Holy Spirit is saying. And, and the Word says that, that God's Word is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. And so it's alive. And it's not a dead Word. It's a live Word. And uh, another section, it says that... Uh, that uh, I wrote it down. Um, that the letter of the law brings death, but the spirit gives life. So you just show, we just saw the letter of the law. These people had the truth of Moses, and they couldn't live it themselves. And then they found someone else who wasn't living it and decided to kill him. That's not life giving. <laughs> uh, that is killing. Um, but so as, as I was reading this again last night, I caught something I had, I had never seen before. Um, if you go to verse 17, um, this is he's he's telling the story. Um, seven or eight. Uh, seven. Uh, chapter seven. So Stephen is telling the story. He's talking about uh, first Abraham, and Abraham hears God. He says, "Leave your country," and so then he says, "I'll show you the country that I'll take you to," and uh, so then. Abraham has Isaac, and Isaac has Jacob, and to get the circumcision and all that. And so then you have the patriarchs, the twelve, all Joseph and his brothers. And, uh, and then Moses. Is getting ready to come, and it says in 17. As the time drew near for God to fulfill his promise to Abraham, 
At this point, where is Abraham? Yeah, he's 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 not alive in our sense. Um, he's waiting. Uh, he's not in hell. But that's not my point. God's getting ready to fulfill the promise. What's the promise? Somebody remember the promise for me. I'll make the people as numerous as the stars. Numerous as the stars in the sky. And so he's going to make that promise fulfilled. But Abraham is no longer walking the earth. But God is still a promise keeper. He's going to do what he said. And, and I'd never caught that before. I just found that uh, it just fed me last night that uh, as the time grew near for God to fulfill his promise to Abraham Abraham is no longer walking the earth but God's still doing what he said he would do and uh, so the next section focuses on Moses and that's where the Sanhedrin and, and all of them were stuck. Uh, they have Jesus. Jesus had walked in their presence. Jesus had raised people from the dead. Jesus had made blind eyes see. Jesus had made lepers clean. He had taken people who had never walked before, and they walked. And instead of going... This guy is amazing. They went, we must punish him. He's, we, we got to kill him. We got to get rid of him. And because uh, they're stuck, Moses. This is, this is it, Moses. There's nothing more, nothing ever. We got Moses. Is there a lot in Moses? Yes. He, he, he is the shadow of what was to come. He was a shadow of Jesus. He's, he's Jesus in the Old Testament, sort of, because he, he comes and he takes the people out of slavery, and he's taking them to a promised land. He gives them a relationship with the Father. Right. And no, he gives them the relationship with the Father, but they reject it. That was the whole point, is they, w they all went up to Mount Sinai, and what did... All the people do. Yeah, because they heard they heard the trumpets. They heard a roaring water, sound of roaring water, and they go, "No, no, we don't want to go up there. We don't want to get anywhere near God." Moses, you go up and talk for us. They wanted someone between them and God. That's not what God had planned. He wanted us to have direct access, but. The people didn't want that. They didn't want that access to God. And uh, so then they wandered around the desert for 40 years. And then after Moses passes, um, is taken away, um, it says in uh, verse 44 that they had the tabernacle. That was a place that Moses had met with God in the tabernacle. The tabernacle was still with him and was with him in the, in the time of, of uh, Joshua. And they got into the promised land and it was still with them. And then David's going to build a house and God says, there's too much blood on your hands. We'll let your son do it. So then we no longer need the tabernacle and we have the temple and so the people still aren't getting that relationship with God and so verse 51 you stiff neck necked people with uncircumcised hearts and ears you are just like your forefathers you resist the Holy Spirit and if you go back over this and you read, all these places are places where they go just a little bit and they go, that's as far as I'm going. 
And then God tries to push them on a little bit farther, and they go just a little bit farther. They'll only listen to the Holy Spirit for so much. We'll only do so much. And so Stephen is telling them, you have uncircumcised hearts. Your heart should be open to what God has. You, you, your ears aren't open. You don't hear. You may hear what he has to say, but it doesn't compute and you're not going to do it. And we're resisting the Holy Spirit. Verse 52. Was there ever a prophet your fathers did not persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. Speaking of Jesus. You have received the law that was put in effect through angels, but have not obeyed it. They got stuck on certain things. And Jesus explained it to them. All those laws can be distilled down to two. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. The rules were not there to oppress people. They were there to teach them how to love God and their neighbor. And they plug their ears. If, if you notice, that's, that's what they say. Um, verse 57. At this, they covered their ears, yelling at the top of their lungs. And they rushed at him to kill him. Look at our world today. Look at our world today. That's what they do. They cancel us. It, it's like dog pile on whoever you view as wrong at this moment. If they could kill him, they would. And eventually it will come to that place. But it's the same thing in the church. Instead of getting along with each other, we have to go... This is my pet peeve, and you better not cross it. Because if you do, I'm done with you. How loving is that? How loving is that? It's not. But that's where we are. That's what we do. Someone makes us mad. We don't forgive. And we don't ask for forgiveness. We just... Go on. And eventually, eventually nobody's together. Can families stay together now? No. So what makes us think the church can stay together? There's only one way if we listen to his spirit. We lay down our pride and we listen to his spirit. But what we have to do is, no, this is, this is it. This is, I come no further. So God has to wait for another generation. Okay, maybe the next one will move a little bit farther and a little bit farther and a little bit farther. Willing to do whatever he says. I like the story Julia was telling us. <coughs> um, excuse me, Officer Sam was telling us. Um, and it reminded me of this story. Um, hers was the person was rude. The person at the counter was rude. And the person gave him a tip. And uh, so this story was the guy was in a big rush, how we always are. We're in a big hurry. We got to do what we got to do. And there's a couple standing in front of them and got their little baby. And uh, they're trying to scrape all their money together so they can, it was like a, a box, a little thing of ho-hos and a, a thing of milk. And 
and something else for the parents. And they were, they were short. And so the guy, who's a pastor, he says, I, I, I'll pay for it. I far, forgot the, the struggle. He was standing there kind of like, I'm in a hurry. Come on, let's get going. Let's move. Get out of my way. And then he says, I hear God speaking. Pay for what they got. And give them a $100 bill. You got it? Give it. And so he, he uh, tells them, I'll pay for it. And then once they pay for everything and he pays for his, he walks out with them and he hands them a $100 bill. And they begin to weep. And he's like, they're appreciative. And uh, they go, you, you don't understand. You don't understand. The baby was hungry. We, we didn't want the baby to die on an empty stomach. Because we lost our job. We lost our house. We don't have any money left. And we we're going to crash the car and kill ourselves off. And they said, you've given us hope. You've given us hope. That's our job. Our job is not to bicker and complain with each other. Our job is not to go give excuses why we're not going to do something. Our job is to give the world hope. Jesus is the only hope this world has. He's the only hope. Otherwise, we're just like that picture where we're stoning each other. We have to grab a hold of that hope. We have to give that hope. We have to, to wear shoes of peace and be willing to hand out that hope. And if, and if we're not living in it, they don't see it. If we don't be that group of people where... They'll know we are Christians by our love. Yeah. Unless we as a group of people can live that and walk that day to day, yeah. rubbing up against each other, iron sharpening iron. How does iron sharpen iron? How does iron sharpen iron? By conflict. It rubs up against each other and makes each other sharp. But as soon as you go, just like... In Corinthians, I'm the I, they're not an I, I don't belong with them. You're on your own, you ain't getting any sharper. You're stuck with where you are, and the more you use it, the duller you will become. We need each other. We have to work together, we have to love one another, and then... And this is what people are seeing from outside. But if we don't continue on, they're just going to go, oh, well, it worked for a little while, but I think Open Arms was only there about three or four years, and it was over. People, I told you all a couple week ago, weeks ago, had the neighbor stop me. And said, I want to, as, as a person of Irving, I want to thank you for what you guys are doing. I want to thank you for the, the food pantry, for the meals, for the clothes. I want to thank you on behalf of Irving for that. So this last week, um, Chris had somebody who was coming up and, uh, and giving him some direction. And he just stopped me. He goes, Randy, I just want to tell you. Thank you for what you're doing for the community. We see it. So the next day, the same guy's up here again, and somebody else comes driving up. And from in town here, both people from the town, he goes, I just want to thank you for what you guys are doing. 
we got a check in the mail this week, or was that last week? Something, $150, saying thanks for all that you do. Another lady stopped by. They don't even live in town. A lot of people drive by and see the sign and see what we're doing. And they go, I want to be a part of that. I want, I, like I told you a while back, I had the lady, I was kind of grumbly. Um, I was doing, moving all this stuff, heavy work, and, and uh, somebody pulls up. And I'm like, well, her. And she says, I just had something for you. And she hands me a check for $300. We just see all the good work you guys are doing and just wanted to be a part of it. And uh, so somebody else stopped by yesterday and said, um, this, is, this is my church. I can't be there all the time. She's been a couple of times. And she goes, but I still want to be a part. Here's a check for $100. We need to know that. You on there need to know that. Because where a lot of us are, are going, ah, I don't want to do that. Eh, no, I'm not going to do that this week. No, I'm not going to take my responsibility. I'm not going to do my part. Somebody will take care of it. Somebody will take care of it. You have to live outside of yourself. All of us have to live outside of ourselves. That's really what Officer Sam was telling the young ones here. Live outside of yourself. Someone's going to come here, hopefully this week, and they'll need a friend. And you befriend them. And that counts for all of us. That counts for each one of us. And so Holy Spirit, next time one of us has an excuse, remind us, we're not listening to you. We're not listening to you. We prefer our way. I don't know about you. I did 27 years of my own way. I did it my way for 27 years. And after that, I decided whatever God wants, I'm doing. Amen. I'm doing. And so we're going to sing a little bit uh, and pray a little bit because it's the same thing. We have an opportunity. It's not you have to do something. You have an opportunity to do something. You have an opportunity to make a difference in a child's life. Whether it's during vacation Bible school, whether it's the time after that. That's where all of us, and I know a lot of us will be watching on here, so I'm talking to you too. And I'm not picking people out, I'm not pointing fingers. I'm saying we have the opportunity right now to make a difference to people's lives for their eternities, heaven and hell. But we would rather go to a movie instead of taking my time out to do this. We would rather go out to eat instead of giving to the, to the opportunity to change people's lives. I have people calling all the time. They need money for their rent. They need food. They need this. But we turn a blind eye to that. And I can't do it because the money's not there. <clears throat> so God has a way of giving it. He has a way of giving it. So I'm not telling you, you better put something on the way in tonight. No. But you lose that opportunity to make a difference in somebody's life. You lose that crown. You do something. Whatever you do for the least of these, you do for him. And if you refuse, the next time, he'll just go to somebody else. You won't feel that tug at your heart again. It will go quiet. And that's because he asked again and again. Again and again. So, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you. Lord, my life is different. 
my life is different because I had a couple of people tell me about you and then I had a preacher on TV tell me about you and my life has completely changed because of that Lord help us to be that change for someone help us to look past ourselves Look past our tiredness. Jesus, when you were hanging from the cross, you didn't go, well, that was about long enough for them. You stayed there. Your word says that you could have had uh, 10 or 12,000 angels come and take him off the cross. But Jesus, you said our lives were worth it. Lord, help us see other people's lives as worth it. I'm going to pray something, and if you have something to pray out, for Vacation Bible School, for uh, um, someone who's sick. We've got plenty of sickness to go around. Uh, for healing, for uh, our broken bones, for uh, somebody. Uh, I'll start us out. And whoever the Lord lays on your mind, pray that out. Don't be afraid of it. This is, this is where our power will come from. Or this is where we will find it. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you. Lord, uh, I know you set us up one more opportunity to make a difference in the kids in Irving. And Lord, uh, Lord, we worked with their parents when they were little kids. And uh, Lord, we just ask for a little longer. Lord, we ask for a little more of you. Lord, we ask for a little more of you in our lives so we can pour out to the next generation. Lord, I just pray that uh, we would be pleasantly surprised tomorrow that uh, yes. people bring their kids. And Lord, if there's three kids here, we will do whatever we can for those three kids. We will make it the best week that we can get. Somebody else pray out. Lord, we just pray for your Holy Spirit to be present here throughout this next week. We, we commonly forget that you called the children to you and explained the promise. Yes. The promise. They were the yes. disciples, that they were the most important ones. That they were more important than the rest of them. Like the children. Lord, we're praying for us to reach the children, but help the children to reach us. Help the children to see the love that we have and reciprocate it, and then we see our love through them, and we see the impact you're making. And allow that impact to carry generation to generation to generation. As Randy said, I've watched so many kids that have grew up with me who know who my mom and Randy and Tara are because of all the amazing things they did as they're growing up. Let's continue that. Lord, allow the children to be an example of your love. Lord, I just pray for the sick and the broken, Lord, that you would be there, that you would heal them, even on their ins and outs, Lord, that you would weave them together like a seamstress making a beautiful quilt, Lord. You made them in the beginning and you can repair them in the end. I just pray that as this week goes on, we see healing and we see awesome things through the littlest of people. Lord, I just want to thank you, uh, for past works but just as, as Jacob was praying there I remember Kelly <laughs> driving all over creation she drove from Hillsboro to Witt and picked up a, a car load of kids and then she'd drop them off in Hillsboro and drive back to Witt pick up some more kids pick up some kids in Irving and so her Another lady did the same thing every week. 
There was a reason we had a bunch of kids. It's because we had a group of people who were ready to do whatever it took. So, Lord, I just thank you for those works, those things that uh, we've done in the past in your name. We ask for forgiveness of, for some of the things we've done in your name. But, Lord, we thank you for giving us the strength to do some other things in your name that have more fruit. Somebody else, somebody, somebody or something to pray for.
this monk that his time here, he would be influenced and he would see the love that you have for him, that Randy has for him, and that there would be a change in his life.
she overcomes that fear and finds a way to draw closer to you. She's seeking you out. She has four or five kids to be an influence to, and she's, she wants to find a church, but she's so scared to find a church. And I just pray that there would be peace there, that her and her husband would find a place to be, that they would seek you first and foremost, and that you would be present.
shall prosper. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Every tongue rises against us will see my judgment.